Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to look at Bitcoin, we're going to look at XRP, and we're going to look at Theta. We can see right now the price is not doing too much. Um, just a little review. We've been talking about this being a ABC correction for a while now. Um, the question is, is it finished? Well, last week I said there's a pr probably a good chance that it is finished, although for the altcoins, although Bitcoin could always come back down to the bull market support band very easily. Um, from me, what it looks like now, it kind of looks like we're going to get a bounce out of here. It just it just has that shape, right? I mean, again, the market moves in fives and threes. Nothing goes in a straight line, um, you know, like I said, they move fives and threes. So we can see like a one, two, three, right? We see one, two, three. And it just, you know, just looking at it, it seems like it wants to do this. One, two, and three. So maybe we go down a little bit more and then we get that third. Maybe we come down and we meet the low and then get that third. But that's kind of what I'm thinking here. And then once we get back up here, then that's where the true test comes in. Because at that point, it's like, okay, now we're in the middle of the retracement levels. We're in the middle of, you know, kind of like a do or die situation. Um, what is it going to be? So from here, right, let's put the retracement up. So I bring this down right about there. And the Fibonacci retracement. I would say from the 886 to the 618. So somewhere in this zone. And then I'll take this and get rid of it. And basically looking for the price to get into that yellow box. Uh, let's see, what's that? Between 67 and 71. So that's really the, the strong area. I mean, I would say the most major area would be about 71 and a half thousand. So that's the thing. Um, but yeah, I got some interesting things I want to talk about today that I haven't shared. So stick around. Um, but looking at this, right, um, we can see, right, obviously this is an A. We come up into a B, right? And now we're working our way down into C. So we talked about that. So what's interesting is, right, when I put this resistance or support line here, Right, we come all the way down, we establish support. So this support is confluent with this area over here. We came up in a retracement, right? And then we came down in quite a uh, few waves here. We have one, two, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, you know, when, when I say fives and threes, um, the market does move in fives and threes. When I count seven, I'm basically counting the extra wave in the third wave. So anytime you hear me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that those two extra waves, there's basically, um, you know, the middle of the third wave, if, if that makes sense. Um, so really, in reality, this is a five wave move. You can see one, two, three, four, five. The difference is I didn't count this one here. So um, seven waves is a good bottoming process. I know there's been a theory of the seven wave bottoming theory, and I've seen it tested over and over and over again. A good example is right here on X XRP. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then seven barely takes out the low. Another good example is here. One, two, three, four, and five. So when I zoom in on this, check this out. You see it a little bit clearer, more wave structure. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then usually you get a big bounce to the upside and then you flag out in here. So that's kind of what happened. Another example, too, is you have, you know, Bitcoin here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So basically you're just counting that extra wave in there. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can go about it, but basically um, it's, it's theoretically a seven wave bottoming process or a topping process, right? So, um, you know, when I look at this, right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe we get seven, right? You see what I mean? So you would just be counting that extra wave in there. So I just wanted to just sort of emphasize that for a moment, but let's go back and look at the short time frame. Again, when I, 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 I like the fact that when we came down, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we came down in seven. Obviously, that reversed, or for at least the, a short um, period of time, reversed it. And, but when we came down, we broke this resistance, or, uh, the support here, and we grabbed all of that liquidity right everybody went short when we broke it and then bam the price came up and faked you out so then um you're sort of in the middle of this point and this point right here so people say okay um we're ready right and then i'm gonna go long and then what happens you come all the way back down so what i'm looking for is for price to hold support right around this um, support line. And it looks like it's already attempting to do that. I mean, we barely missed it. I guess you can say, eh, actually, um, we did hit it. So let me put it right about there. It's not going into the bodies. It is ever so slightly, so I'll put another line right about there. And Basically, we want to stay above these two lines, um, above 61,500. So it's looking pretty good. Um, so, you know, there's the seven waves. So let's see here, right? We came down, we grabbed the liquidity, and we continued to pump. Interestingly, right, you can count it uh, down here. One, two, three, four, five six and seven and what's interesting is we we're landing right on the right on the uh the support line so to me uh you know it's not confirmed but maybe this is you know we're getting close to that reversal area for this wave to start turning around in the proper direction we all wanted to um so that's kind of how i'm looking at it now Usually what happens is it makes you believe we're going down, down, down. And it takes its time, right? It takes its time. It, it kind of goes down, comes back up, it goes down, comes back up, goes down, comes back up. And then we'll wick in here, right? And they'll say, okay, the bottom's in. And then it'll come down again very slowly, come back up, and then it'll come down, and then it'll barely take it out. Everybody goes short, and then bam, they take it back. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is going on here, right? We have our, our support line in here. So you could put a, another one down here, which is basically our safety net for a double bottom. Um, if we break that, then most likely we're going down to the bull market support band, which would be fine. It would be okay, but we, we really want the altcoins to stay and hold um, their support levels because you know when I look at total three we're still looking pretty good and you know we're still nowhere you know near the bottom I mean I guess you could say we are but we really want to stay above this wick here at 563 billion so you know we're about a hundred billion you know less than a hundred billion away so what I like about total three, which is all of the altcoins. So when I say that, it's it's your coin, it's your friend's coin, it's everybody's coins. We came down, right? We had a big pump to the upside. And then we came down. This is important right here. We built a little box in here, this little base, right? We broke above the base. And now, right, let me zoom in. 
you can see we are attempting to back test it, right? So that's that's the important part. So that's why I was, you know, kind of waiting to make the video because it wouldn't really change anything. So this is this is the area here for the the back test level, right? So we have all of our resistance right in here, right? We broke out. We did uh, test it. We did back test it, and we came up, and now we're coming down to retest it. So you know we came down in. It seems like that's. Uh, let's see here. Let me. Okay, so it seems like this is one, two. All of this is three. This is four, and this is five, right? And did we break the low? Let's look. We did. We did break the low. So here's the low right here. Right here. And we broke it by just a little bit. And what I like about this is we came down and we basically, you know, took out this low. And what do we call that? A liquidity grab. And then what's also more important, right? By the way, none of this is financial advice. It could be totally dead wrong. Always know that. Um, so what I'm talking about, right, I'm sort of highlighting the possibility of us bottoming here. It totally could be, or it could just easily go through the floor. But I'm just providing evidence to suggest that it's probably not going to do that, right? Um, so the thing is, is one, two, three, four, five, six, and look at this, seven. Right. And seven barely took out. So my guess, right, would be that this could be the bottom in here. So we're going to start pumping to the upside. And then we're going to probably flag out in here for a while. And it'll be like another long sort of process. You know, uh, here's our retracement levels in here. We'll probably bump our head right into the resistance. Theoretically, this should this should um, this should happen under the circumstances that I just talked about, being the seven waves, being you know we break out, we're back testing, we sort of baking a double bottom in here, um, you know, and then uh, so we should usually like the example I shared, right? When we have that seven waves, we come up and then we sort of flag out in here. We flag out, we make a low, and we make a higher low, and then we start getting the hell out of here. And what this could be, ladies and gentlemen, is you have a shoulder, you have a head, and then you have a shoulder. So to me, I'm looking at this as a bottom. I'm looking at this as an inverse head and shoulders. Now, this is total three. It all depends on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin decides, you know what? I don't like it. I got up on the wrong side of the bed today. I feel like going back to sleep, you know, and Bitcoin says, I'm going to pump up a little bit and then I'm just going to drop down to the bull market support band. Then then that's the case. And, you know, you have to understand that's totally possible and even maybe even likely. Right. Given the, the fact that it hasn't tested it yet. So. Um, but I would expect there probably to be a bounce first, sort of like a one, two, and a three before it does that. I don't see it so much doing it right now. I mean, it could, but that's, that's kind of the deal. So if that occurred, then we have to ask ourselves, okay, then what would happen with total three? Well, we would most likely lose this support, right? And then we would probably get a bounce and then we would fall all the way down and retest the bull market support band. And then if that's the case, then we still technically made right a higher low. So here's our low way down in here. And then right, we pump to the upside and we come all the way down to make a higher low. So here's our low, here's a higher low. If we break that, then we have one last chance to hold it. So we have sort of three areas. Area one, area two, area number three. This is our last chance. If we break this, 
then we're just gonna we're, we're really gonna have to understand what Bitcoin's doing at that point. But we would most likely come all the way down to back test, and we talked about this to the prior swing high. So somewhere in here, right? Um, but you know that's that's in the event that Bitcoin does decide, right? You know. It's really up to Bitcoin, and that's kind of the sad reality about crypto. And I think that's one of the biggest problems crypto has is us having to depend on Bitcoin to do its thing when reality, you know, utility should drive the market. The problem is utility doesn't drive the market, right? Um, supply and demand based off speculation, based off you know, market algorithms and Bitcoin, right? The stock market, the way, you know, how the money velocity is going in and out, right? Um, now, for the stock market, you know, you do have individual stocks that make, you know, do their thing based off earnings, based off certain things, right? Um, so with crypto, it would be more like, the coin will, like, for example, uh, you know, Theta or XRP, I think both have good utility. They both would go up in value, down in value based off their utility function. And the only way that happens is if we get regulation, right? We need sort of that regula regulatory framework in order to have that um, area. I think they'll still be somewhat correlated to Bitcoin, but it won't be as bad as we see it today. So, but even the even if it is correlated to Bitcoin, it still is much better in percentage terms as far as Bitcoin goes, right? Because if Bitcoin hits a hundred thousand dollars, that's not even fifty percent, right? I mean, it's nothing. I mean, usually the altcoins you want to swing for at least you know three to five hundred percent up to 1200 percent and then anything above a thousand 1200 is considered you know uh, basically very very special um and you know it doesn't happen all that often and if it does happen you probably don't have a big enough bag for that to make a, su a substantial difference like for example when dogecoin went off to the moon some guy cashed out his entire life savings and put it into Dogecoin, right? I don't know why, I have no idea, but he nailed it, right? Elon Musk talked about it, not not the not what happened, but tweeted about it, and then bam, Dogecoin shot to the moon, and the guy was, you know, he had like 50 million or 100 million dollars. It was insane. So, you know, not many people are gonna cash out their life savings and put it into one coin that's a small cap, right? Um, so most of us are looking around 500 to 1,000% based off a cycle low, cycle top, right? So, you know, I'll talk about that in another video, but essentially, you know, if you look at, for example, the price of Theta, right? This coin, a lot of people would accumulate a lot of it, right? But it, Theta can only go so high, right? So if you look at, let's say it hits 50 bucks, and I would say most people accumulated down at the $1.30 area, right? So I'll just go in the middle between trying to get an average, and I'll go up, um, you know, to $50. That's 3,000%, and that's why it's special, right? That's why I... I think it's got a good chance at doing that. Now, a lot of other coins, they would probably only hit, you know, 1,200%, right? So um, it has a lot more percentage potential, as you would say. So speaking of Theta, right, let's look at, let's look at Theta, but let me just wrap up total three real quick. Um, again, with total three, we have, a potential for it to, you know, start to accelerate to the upside, at least get into the retracement levels. Why? Well, because number one, we have an A 
B, C. Number two, we hit the bull market support band. Number three, we are currently back testing this area in here, right? You can see we came down all of these candles in here, right? We break out, we're back testing it. And so far we're holding it. Number four, it seems it's moving very correctively, right? Number five, we have Bitcoin um, kind of doing the same thing, right? We have our support here, our support here. We came up and now we're, you know, coming back down and we're back testing this uh, support area. So it would appear like it needs a bounce. And we have three and a half hours before the daily close. Look at the daily close. Look at the candle. It looks like a bullish hammer candle, even though it's red, right? It's it's sort of a, a hammer candle, uh, you know, so that's signaling that it's, you know, it's rejecting. If I flip it upside down, you could see, right? If I flip the chart upside down, you can see that it's looking like it wants to come down. It looks like it's topping out in here. And by the way, I haven't talked about the most important part, which is the retracement. You can see, you know, we um, came down, which is going up. So let me flip the chart back so nobody gets confused. So check this out. Let me actually go to the six hour. And we did have a, an, an engulfing candle here. And then, you know, I did talk about the seven waves, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the seventh wave barely took out this wave here while still remaining above this high. And then also, you know, holding support in here, right? You're holding all of the support. So, and again, this is our last line of support. But what I wanted to tell you is this move, right? Because it's all about, you know, we talked about the, the larger time frames and things. What what's happening right now? You can see the price going down, 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 down. So what is why is it doing that? Well, because it's correcting this move to the upside. We had a big crash. And then we, you know, we pumped to the upside and now we're dumping again. Why are we dumping? Because it's retracing this move. So if we put the retracement on and I'm going to put it from here all the way to the top. You can see we perfectly nailed the 702 and we're holding above the 618. This is this is another sort of point of reference like a you know a point of confluence that we probably are 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 bottoming out in here. Um, now it's never for sure. I, it could it could easily easily just roll over totally. But I don't know that. I don't know the future. I can't tell you one way or another. I can just give, you know, these different things I'm telling you, making the case as to why it's probably likely we, we bottomed here, at least for the time being. So I don't know any other YouTube channel that would call that. Um, I'm certainly not calling it, but I would say I'm more inclined to think so because of the thing we've talked about. Now, if that if this holds true, right, and this is our low, and this is our high, right, and we came down into a 618 retrace, then there's, you know, it's probably a good area um, for a bottom. Now, it's just a, a 702. We still have, right, the 886 down in here. So I would be, if we lose this, I would look between... 60 and 61k which wouldn't be out of the question right it wouldn't be out of the question and if we get a and if we come down there then i would really think at that point one two three four five six seven right if we roll a down that's just a plus one right that's a plus one and do we have the problem, though, we don't have any bullish divergence um, on the six-hour chart. I'll have to check the smaller time frames. Um, but essentially, it, that's where I would be looking for a buying opportunity. So anywhere between here, 
where we are now around the 618 to the 886. So somewhere in here would be a good area for the price to start to reverse. Now, that doesn't mean reverse and go to the moon. It just means reverse for the time being. And then we can reevaluate later as the price um, makes it back into, you know, sort of the retracement levels up in here. Because there's a, here's the low or here's the high and here's another high. So the gap between this and this was never filled, right? And when I mean gap, I just mean, you know, the, the price gap, right? Not a gap in price, but the, the difference between these two points. So in here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, now, if we lose it again, if we lose it, so be it. We come down to the bull market support band and that is something we've talked about for a long time going back um i would say in early march you know the need to hit the bull market support band so last cycle we didn't we didn't hit it during this where the phase we are now so it makes me think well we might not hit it this time um but there's always that possibility if it does occur and we do get a strong bounce out of here then I would say the likelihood of getting through the retracement is much better, much, much better, right? Because it would be a proper, uh, it would be a proper move, right? So to me, it would turn into a WXY. So it would appear like you have one, two, and now we're coming down for three, something like that, right? And then this is one, two, three, and there, and this is one, two, three. So we have a flat in wave A. We have um, we have a three-way move in wave B, so it would be a W, X, and a Y. We would get down here, and that would be the reversal area. So that's definitely a possibility. I don't know if that's going to happen based off of what I, what I just said, but if it does happen, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, so now let's let's talk about the price of theta. And just real quick though, you can kind of see. Let me go even smaller to like the fifteen minute. You can kind of see, right? I mean, we talked about one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, and then six, and then seven. And then in wave seven, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then with a strong impulse off the low. So we Here's wave seven, we broke it, and then a strong impulse. So I would imagine at least for the next several days, we're going to hold above this uh, probably within at least the next day or two, we're going to hold above this low down in here. Um, I would expect it to flag out in here. This is the 15-minute chart, so just be aware of that. Um, flag out a little bit before heading higher. And then it'll be interesting to see what happens in these retracement levels. So if we if we continue to roll over now and just keep dumping, then I would expect uh, one more low in here before before doing before uh, reversing. But I really think it's probably on the short time frame bottomed right now. So when I zoom out to the two hour chart. You can see how corrective it looks, you know, and, and usually when it's correcting to the downside, I mean, you can see this channel in here too, right? And usually a descending channel will break to the upside. Just kind of how like, you know, this broke, this was actually a rising wedge, but same kind of thing. It was a, an ascending, it broke down, now we're descending. 
So the hope is for it to break to the upside. Um, and again, if we don't, we hit the bull market support band, then it is, it is what it is. So that's kind of it. I mean, you can even see it over here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can even kind of see it over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? So over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Barely taking out the high. So you're really just counting that plus one in the third wave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the price of theta, what is the price of theta doing? Well, we, you know, we have a A, B, and a C, right? We came down, it's sort of just recapping what we've already talked about. We have this base down in here, right? We have this wick that we pierced through the bull market support band. It got bought up instantly. We came up, we made this base. Then we continue to go higher. We ran into resistance in here. We ran into our resistance in here, which is to be expected. Um, so, you know, anytime you crash down and then shoot back up really quickly, you usually end up flagging out. Um, so uh, a flagging out can be, um, you know, coming down, making a higher, higher low before continuing higher, right? That would be the ideal, but these things can get long in here where you can sort of, you know, do something like this before breaking out, right? Kind of like create an inverse head and shoulder or something in here that creates a base, right? If it creates a base in here, that would be very bullish. It would just be very time consuming, kind of like how this, created a base in here. So something like that, right? Where we came down, we came up, and then we started to continue higher. So the main important thing for the price of theta is to hold the, hold the low, right? Don't break it. And what I'm noticing here, let me zoom in to the four hour chart. What I'm noticing here is a back test, right? So here's the same thing like, you know, total three. We have resistance, 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 right? And uh, we broke above it. And now it appears we're back testing it. So, you know, that's kind of interesting if we can hold above it. Um, look at this crazy wick here happened last night it was like a two minute candle it shot all the way up here and then it came right back down very interesting but essentially we have you know this base right in here we break out of it right and you can see we're pretty we're moving pretty impulsively up here and then this is like overlap 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 right it's overlapping with each other and now the price is back testing this area in here. So we want to hold support in here. So between, you know, I would say between $2 and where we are now it, to hold support. So I would like for that $2 area to hold and we can start rounding out in here and then making an attempt to, to get that reversal. So, you know, I think we still got some work to do. Probably it's going to take, if this theory is correct and we can hold this area, it's probably going to take another maybe, oh, maybe a half a week to a week um, to really carve out a bottom in here. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how that goes. But we can see um, the retracement area. If I put it from the base of the candles to the base of the candles, you can see we perfectly had a 618 retrace, right? So here's our low in here. We came up 
and we had a 618 retrace, which is good. So we want to hold in here. We want to hold it between, really between the 886 and the 618. Um, and again, it'll depend on Bitcoin if what it wants to do. So what's cool though is we have somewhat of a channel in here, right? And then you can argue as well, it kind of looks like a falling wedge. And a falling wedge, you know, it's not perfect. I mean, I don't even, uh, it's, it's not so much of a wedge. I mean, I guess it is technically getting wedged in there, but more importantly, you know, we're consolidating. We have this move up and now we're chopping down. So eventually we want to break out. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. And that's basically long story short. So if we do break below this, then we still have the bull market support band, right? We tested it a couple times here. If I just draw it out here, we're not that far away from it. It's about uh, about a dollar ninety or so. So if we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, we do pump up for six and then get seven, and we land in here. I want to see a reversal. So I would say we're getting pretty close, right? Um, we have the 618 retrace, um, you know, Bitcoin, um, higher low, uh, total three, you know, back testing its area. So it's really up to the market if it wants to hold this area, but everything looks good for it to start rounding out in here. Um, let me look at the very short time frame. Let's go to the 15 minute. So the 15 minute still looks kind of bearish. It still looks like it probably needs some more downside. Um, I would say that $2, that $2 area, I would say this would be a good price zone somewhere in here. Right. And if we, of course, if we lose that, then we have the bull market support band. But it kind of looks like, um, let's see, a, the problem is what the heck is this? Yeah, I, it, it, to me, it looks like we need one more low. Um, because one, two, you could say all of this is three, four, and then we get one more low, five. We can carve out a bottom in here and then start, you know, creating a bottoming structure before heading higher. Again, it's, it's just me speculating um it's very hard to know exactly on the smaller time frames but some things we do know right are the the fractals we've been we've been taking a look at so this is one fractal um you know and we did have the same type of um you know a b c and you can see we pump to the upside and then we pull all the way back it seems like it's breaking the low and then bam it starts to accelerate so we're really right in this area, right at the low here, and we're just trying to hash out a bottom. And that's pretty much it. So looking at Theta Fuel, I'll just be real quick with this one. I mean, it's still very bullish. We have one, two, three, four, five, I guess you could say. Um, of course, it could be an A, um, B, and a C. But in any regard, I would I would want to see this pull back a little bit more, and then you know back test this area somewhere in here, uh, about nine cents or so. So we have this move up, we pull back, we flag out in here, find some support. So yeah, now that I see it, it does look like we have a little bit more downside to go, but then start to curve out of here and be on our way now. If we do lose this area, it's still okay, 
right? Because we have the bull market support band here, I would just be looking for another low like that. And that would still be a flat and it would still be very bullish, right? Because we have A, B, and then basically we have this chop in here if we did come down. One, two, three, four, five. Not five waves, but you know, five different areas um, to get down in here. So basically this five wave corrective structure definitely overlapping though the, the thing is is this wave took out this high so you can't really say it's five waves right um so what you want at that point is for this wave to not break this low right it's still a running flat a b c right it's still a running flat and now this wave is the impulse right this could turn into one two three four right we're waiting for that wave four and then we get wave five and that would be like the best case scenario for theta fuel and then if, if that's the case then we need an a b c in here so we have we have a b and now we're getting c so maybe a little bit more to go before that fifth wave i would like to see a fifth wave one two three four and five if we start to roll over, then we want to just hold this low in here around six cents, between six and seven cents. So we have this wave, right? Now we're correcting. Obviously, if I put the retracement on, where would the 618 retracement be? So we're almost there. It would be right at about nine, eight to nine cents, right in there. So that's kind of what I would like to see for the price of Theta Fuel. We have this move to the upside. Now we're correcting, correcting, correcting. Let's get the 618 retrace of this wave before carving out a bottom and continuing higher. So I think a lot of the charts, I haven't looked at the charts all weekend. I've been busy. Um, I usually try to get one video out during the weekend, but just couldn't do it this time. Um, so I haven't really looked at them, but a lot of the charts are, are kind of rhyming. Uh, a little bit more to go and then continuation. If we lose that area, then we have the bull market support band down below. And that goes for Bitcoin, that goes for Theta, that basically goes for all of them, right? Because we're not that far away from it if we do come down and retest it. So if we did, if total three, put it this way, if total three got down in here, and we had a big bounce with a three-way pullback, that would be a really good buying opportunity. Not financial advice. Uh, we can see... So now let's go to XRP. XRP does look interesting. And even if you hold theta, this is also important because it's doing the same thing. Right, it's it's kind of doing the same thing, which is telling the story. We have our base down in here, right? We break out, we hit, you know, this is the the thing about XRP is we're below the bull market support band, so it's really a bear market resistance band. And you know, you can see. Let me zoom in even more. We have. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? So we have a shoulder, we potentially have a head, maybe we carve out another shoulder, and then we break the neckline. This, this would be the ideal circumstance, right? Um, so it, it, again, it's really going to depend on what Bitcoin wants to do. Going back to Bitcoin real quick. Um, it definitely is very wavy, right? It's definitely overlap, overlap, overlap. Now, it could be a one, two, one, two, and that would be very, very bearish, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we just die. It that could, you know, but the the way it's it's looking, um, it would appear that 
you know, we, we hit the 6.8 retrace. We're attempting to make a, a higher low. And then also looking at those fractals, you know, it, it just seems to me that it, it wants to break to the upside. I mean, we kind of have, you know, we're hitting the resistance, hitting the resistance, hitting the resistance. Now, you could say we're, we're hitting the support right hitting the support um so it's kind of like a wait and see moment if we can break out of this low in here that would be a very very good sign so i wish i can give more information but uh that's kind of where we're at it's it's sort of a wait and see i mean you can go on any technical analyst youtube channel and i'm pretty sure they're kind of like well we just gotta wait and see um but if i had to lean one way if i was forced to lean one way i would say that this low at 59k holds right or actually better yet the total three low holds because if Bitcoin does break the low, here's the total three low. That's, I would expect that this low to hold. If Bitcoin breaks the low, this low here, right? We break the low and we head down here to the bull market support bin, then I would be pretty confident that one two three four five one two three four five it's pretty much over with right so um and if that occurred i really want to see you know total three and let's see what total is doing in here and then total as well total still hasn't tested its bull market support band So, yeah, I see a dump. We had it. Have a pump. If Bitcoin loses its bull market, or if it comes down, we want to retest ours, our bull market support band. So it's kind of like we're in a really interesting situation. Um, and that's the thing. During this liquidation event right here, this big red candle, that was the moment for, for Bitcoin to test it. The bull market support band but it didn't so it kind of leaves us in a situation like well now what well we just have to wait um but any way you look at it when you zoom all the way out it's just a bullish correction you know this you know i've been talking for about you know 48 minutes and really just been talking about the small little small tiny area in here but regardless of everything I just said, it's all about the big macro move right in here. So we want to get back to the all-time high. And that only happens once Bitcoin does. So, um, I mean, you can see Litecoin still holding above the bull market support band. That's the thing. If Bitcoin dumps down to the bull market support band, a lot of these coins would lose theirs. So that kind of makes me concerned, like, you know, we really don't want it to do that uh, on some of these coins, right? So, I mean, Theta Fuel can definitely handle it. XRP, you know, it's still, it's already below its bull market support band, so it really can't afford to lose any more ground here, at least on the macro. Um... But yeah, when I look at this, it looks like it's, you know, we have a base in here. It looks like we're flagging out, right? It looks like we're flagging out and this thing wants to break out. And that's what it would appear to me uh, for us to break out of here. So maybe we get one more low before breaking out. But I think a bottom somewhere in this area is coming in very shortly. I mean, the same thing with Bitcoin as well, right? We have this move up. We're sort of flagging out in here. It's taking its time. You know, maybe we have one more low. We really want to hold above 59K. 
right? We could come down and, and tag 60 first, but then once we do that, we really want to get the heck out of there. So like when you look at Dogecoin, uh, we have a low here, right? And here it's equal to the bull market support band. We came up in three and now it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We really, and then it's hanging by a thread on this low here. So we could come down, take out this low, grab the liquidity, and then hopefully bring it up. So it all, it, it, it appears like a lot of them look like they need one more low. Um, and then we should, you know, hash out a bottom before, you know, reversing. But again, it's really gonna depend on, on Bitcoin. QNT, we have a big move to the upside and see how it's kind of curling over. It reminds me of a fractal. So take a mental screenshot of that, right? We dump all the way down and then we come all the way up and we're just chop, 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 correct, 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 correct. And then when we get right about here, we start to shoot up. Now I'm gonna show you, like take a mental screenshot. Now look at this. Same thing here with XRP. You can see we had a big dump, right? And then we sort of chop, 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 right? And you can see we sort of curled around basically making a little hump, little hill here before, boom, accelerating to the upside. So QNT looks like a really nice fractal of what XRP did right around that C19 area. So let's kind of look at this. We have, I'm just going to count everything. So, you know, when I put them side by side, you can see, you know, XRP coming up here, right? We made this top right in here, top right in here. And then we made a higher, higher high, made a higher high, right? And this is all below the bull market support band, right? We had the big dump, we had the big dump. And then you can kind of see, um, We can kind of see this first move down. Boom, boom, and boom. And then we have this other move here, this other move here. And I just don't like it because you know, when this move back to the upside, move back to the upside, this move took out this top. So it made it a little bit differently. Um, but essentially, I can say, you know, one, two, three, four, and with a double bottom, one, two, three, four, and maybe a double bottom. Um, yeah, but I, I, any way you look at it, it's pretty close. I mean, if I were to just count it like this, one, two, um, one, two, see the, the thing is, let me, let me zoom in here. So we have one, we come up for two, and then we come down for three, and then we make a double bottom. So one, two, three, double bottom. Okay, now let's go down here. We have one, two, three, and then we come down for a double bottom. So it's not really perfect, but it, but essentially, you know, we're flagging out in here, right? I mean, it, the, the fractal looks pretty good. We have this move up, right? And then we're flagging out in here, we're flagging out in here. So eventually, maybe we have one more low, 
but eventually we'll want to break out just like how this fractal did. So that's just another area to suggest that we were, you know, most likely bottoming. And then another way you can do it is with Fibonacci. Um, you can see XRP hit about that 50% retracement. While, you know, Q&T is only at the 382. So it's got a little bit more if it wants to match up with the, with the, with the retracement. But, I mean, we're just getting into the little nitty gritty stuff on the smaller time frames. It's basically been the whole video. But essentially, on the larger time frame, right, with Bitcoin and the rest of the market, any way you look at it, we have an A, B, and a C. So, you know, either this is a one, two, and then we're going, or this is finishing up one, two, three, and then we're going. So um, there is a little bit of gray area in there. We're just going to have to wait and see. What's kind of cool is like when you look at XRP versus Bitcoin, it's still holding up pretty nicely. Um, let's see, go to the four hour chart. I mean, we're starting to... We got a little pump going on in here. So from the bottom, and this is a good indicator kind of to let us know if we bottom or not. From the base of the candle, it's about 2%, right around that one and a half, two percent line. Not much at all, but the point is, is we want to, you know, flag out, which we're doing, and then break out. So we have A, B. Or I should say boom, boom, and then boom. So you can't really see it because I'm on the higher time frame. But it looks like it could be a WXY. Um, w, X, Y. One, two... Let's go. When I look at Ethereum, you know, Ethereum is kind of back testing in here. We have this range in here. We broke out, we're coming down, and we're back testing. So when I look at the smaller time frame, kind of looks like an inverse head and shoulders. It looks like it wants to, um, you know, shoulder, a head and a shoulder. It looks like it wants to, you know, break out and get back up into the uh, retracement level. So if that's the case, then probably the rest of the market, because to me, Ethereum looks the clearest. Uh, Ethereum looks like, you know, it needs to get up here. And then it can either decide down from there or back up, whatever it's, going to do in the retracement level. Um, but yeah, Ethereum, you know, we have, I mean, it looks like one, two, three, four, right? And we have a nice one, two, three, three-way pullback, bounced right off the bull market support band, and we have a one, two, let's finish up wave two and then continue going in that wave three. Four, five. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. Right. I guess you can argue that's one, two on a lot of other charts. Uh, but either way, looking for a continuation once this is finishing up, uh, bottoming out. Is it? It's very hard to say right now. Um, kind of mixed, but I would say we're, we're getting close. We're getting pretty close. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up. Please hit that like button if you can and uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys bullish or bearish? Um, it's kind of in a tough position right now. We'll have to wait and see how it continues to mature. But to me, it looks like it's, you know, in a corrective bull flagish type of situation where it wants to reverse. I just don't know if we have one more low or not. Um, if we do go one more low and we break that, then we're most likely going down to the bull market support band. It's still very bullish. We just have, it's just all about time and, you know, how long it takes to get there. And then also how long it takes to reverse. Um, so a lot of the fractals look like they're lining up nicely for it to reverse very, very soon. So 
anyways, if you want to support the channel, you can always do so through the YouTube tip jar. And if you have any coins you want me to take a look at, you can drop them in the comment section and I'll take a look for the next rapid fire and I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.